Uh, Andrew, Wimbledon. Evening, Andrew. Hey, how are you going? Fine, thank you. So, I mean, as lockdown just descended into farce, we've got the protests for Black Lives Matter. We've got people going to the beach in their in their absolute droves. We've got the protests. We've got Dominic Cummings breaking the rules. We've then got people breaking the rules to protest about Dominic Cummings breaking the rules. We've got Barry Gardner, the MP, going on marches after yeah. condemning Dominic Cummings. We've got Sadiq Khan, who doesn't know his backside <laughs> from his elbow. I'm I'm getting so sick of this, Andrew. It's, a, it's an absolute shit show. Well, I don't know if you can say that, but it's oh, all right, no, Andrew. But I, I think anyone who would have heard that would have probably agreed. But um, we, we won't hear a word like that again, please, Andrew. But it is an absolute farce, right? Yeah, well, I mean, Dominic Cummings, is, he's a hypocrite. He's obviously the worst offender. Um, we, had all these, we had all these people protesting, and that was a completely legitimate reason to go out into the streets. And uh, Dominic Cummings is one guy. He's, uh, he's yeah. out there. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Why is protesting a legitimate reason to break lockdown rules? It is, of course, in normal times, completely legitimate to protest. Why, during lockdown, is it it's, acceptable? Uh, it's, never been, it's never been more important than ever than for people to get out there and voice their opinions about how uh, racist this society we live in is, really. So it's important that we have people go out to protest to make sure lives are saved in the future? Yeah, I mean, ex exactly. Like, right. uh, George Floyd. But what about the lives that might be lost as a result of people gathering together in one place in the future? Do you not see the, the slight contradiction well, in marching to save lives, which could ultimately it's hard, it's lose hard, lives? Uh, you know, it's a hard, it's a hard thing to, uh, to do. But sometimes, you know, if we want to save, if we want to save people from the racist uh, white society, then that's what needs to happen, I guess. I mean, George Floyd might not have been the most upstanding person. He held a gun to it pregnant woman um you know in a robbery but if we want to save lives then we need to we need to get out there on the street you know do you not think that perhaps i mean i agree with the the spirit of what you're saying actually i yeah. do what worries me is that i i don't understand having to break social distancing for this because i'm worried that if people from the black and ethnic minority uh, communities are being disproportionately affected by coronavirus then it's more important than ever that there aren't large gatherings of people from the black and ethnic minority community so that's a worry for that community and for wider communities in general that's my first point my second point is we live in an age that's so sophisticated and clever when it comes to technology for me bearing in mind how how how, how perilous the position that we're in is at the moment could there have been perhaps something that was a little cleverer that could have been sorted? Well, could, there's, could a, they there's have... a lot of there is a lot of uh, white privilege, so these people don't need. They can sit at home and stay safe, and but unfortunately, the uh, the Bain people need to get out of the street and sort of uh, sort but, of. But it's but and Andrew Andrew with 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 love and respect. If there is a wider implication to the whole of society, if a big crowd of people, whatever their ethnicity, get together during a time when it is absolutely essential that groups remain small. Why couldn't they have done an equally powerful protest by making everyone go out onto their doorstep on a Thursday night and kneel down on their doorstep instead Whoa. across the whole of the UK? Why couldn't oh, they have done the biggest ever that. Facebook Live and had every single person go on Facebook Live at a certain time to state that Black Lives Matter across the UK Whoa. from their living rooms? The fact is that... Um... Well, that's all, all that's good, and, and that sort of happened. But the fact is that um, white British people will be a minority by 2066. And so if we want them, we want white people to um, not stop that. And so we need to get out and protest, obviously. Say that Otherwise, again. So, so black and ethnic minority people will be in a minority? or No, white, white British people will be a minority by the year 2066. Right. In England. And so we need to get out and protest, obviously. Like John Boyega, he uh, he said in his protest, he said that he's worried about not having a job, and I completely agree with him because, I mean, Disney supported him and Disney supported the Black Lives Matter protest, but still, um, I think that his jobs are at at stake here. He's really speaking out against the establishment, and it's and it's really inspiring for me to see him do that. It is, and I, I agree, and I'm not saying that a protest or that people's voices shouldn't be heard. I'm totally not saying that. It's ridiculous, and there is a 
a change happening and a change needs to have happened in the in the states for a, 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 a long 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 time um by the way i put the protesters probably at the bottom of the list of the covid idiots because if, if there is if there is one group of people i could understand i can't endorse breaking the rules but at least you can look at it and say okay i have some understanding of that what about those that go to the beach yeah that's ridiculous i mean the there's a place in hell for those people um, isn't there <laughs> well that's the thing the people who go to the beach they are uh, a lot of them what i've heard is they're going to stop the uh, invasion i mean already this year there's been more border crossings illegally from calais um, than all of last year combined and so those people that go to the beach a lot of them i've heard have been going to try to stop that i mean that's no i'm telling you now the photos on Durdle door from the week or two before last where people were throwing themselves into the the sea where the air ambulance had to land because someone jumped off the cliff to go into the sea this was during the lockdown and meaning that they had to kettle everyone at one end of the beach meaning hundreds of people were in one particular place it is ridiculous you just should go to my local park well. go to well, my I've local been park. out there on the beach more like garage that's what i'd say say that again <laughs> I said Farage, more like Garage, am I right? Well, yeah, well, Farage, of course, breaking rules to go and show yes, people exactly. who are apparently I mean, breaking well, that's rules. the thing, that's the thing. He pretends to go I've out I've got about and, Farage, um, I could put him on, can't I? Oh, bring him on. Where, where would he go? Him. So if we put Dominic Cummings number one, I'm sure there'll be other people that go on the list. Where would we put Farage on that list? Oh, he would be probably, I'm not sure. I'm not convinced on Farage, like... On no, one, no, 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 he one. broke rules. You can't... Yes, no, he no, may no, have no. been I trying to bring a very important way. issue to people who feel very passionately no, about it. No, but... no, no, I mean, with Farage, like, some people say he's um, gatekeeping, some people say he's pushing the over to window, but, I mean, I'm not convinced. Like, he went out on the boat and he's obviously a racist, so... Where does he stand? I mean, that's a, that's a question. That's a, that's well, no, question. but that's the point. You can do all of that stuff, but he, by doing so and travelling that distance and not therefore being completely local in his exercising and leaving the house, that was a rule break. Probably not the worst rule break, probably not the kind of break that's going to gonna cause horrific issues, well, but it's still a rule, rule break. With it. The, real, the real problem with it was that he was actually stopping... Um, he was uh, standing up the English people and he was stopping the invasion um, force, as some racists have called it, from actually uh, getting into Britain. That's the problem. Yeah, well, that, that, that's his justification, of course. And in yeah. normal circumstances, people may well agree with that. But all bets are off when there is a pandemic lockdown and that is the point you can't say well this is so important i'm nigel farage i'm going to go and do this i mean i suppose there would have been an argument if we're going to employ dominic cummings well, guess, defenses here that he's a key worker because it's journalism but i think there's a bit of a stretch I guess, I guess in a sense then you could make an argument for an authoritarian um governance in which um you know we we actually have a bit of bit of authority instead of this um you know this uh, neoliberal um you know, tyranny, uh, this, this anarchism almost, not full anarchism, obviously, but so I mean, are we, are we, are we, for authoritarianism. are we in anarchy at the moment then? I think we're an anarcho tyranny, tyrannical um, society in a sense. Uh, how so? Well, I mean, it's almost as if there's a parallel, parallel system here. Like you have uh, one channel, people can get away with uh, an abundance of, of um, horrible things, and on the other channel, people will get uh get locked up and in trouble for something uh, very very simple like uh that that's why i see it and what are your examples of that because I, I don't know whether anyone would i didn't kind of understand that fully from what you simply said so what would be an example of of those two different channels you spoke of yeah so if someone posts an offend, offensive tweet like they might get in trouble but yeah. if someone caught, does a horrific a horrific crime, which I'm sort of uh, hesitant to say on the radio, of course, but because uh, I've said that naughty words before, so I don't want to say the other one. But uh, if someone did a horrific crime, like in real life, then they might get a lighter sentence. So you have parallel societies. It's almost like you have an, it's almost like you have an underclass and you have a, a people that can't be touched. A, another term, elites, that elites, elites if you like, and, and that is why I'm, I'm sorry I, I put Dominic Cumming at the top of the list of elites as well because that's yeah, precisely absolutely. What he was. But yeah, then you've got you're right. Elites. But then you've got people 
who the police turned up and had a go at them for, for sitting in their own front garden, for instance. You've got police turning up and having a go at people for sitting in their own front garden. But then you've got someone who drives 260 miles for childcare that he didn't even actually need at that moment. And people say, well, he was justified. You're right, it is a double two-tier system. It's hypocritical, it's unfair. And that is not the only example. Andrew, nice to talk to you. Oh, we're putting the world to rights, aren't we?